you never want a serious crisis to go to waste. And what I mean by that, it's an opportunity to do things that you think you could not do before. You know, we, we have the, uh, the chief of staff for President Obama was, is an old friend of, of mine and my husband's and was in the White House when, when Bill was there. And, and he said, you know, uh, never waste a good crisis. This crisis also presents an opportunity. It's a catalyst. The government encouraged the manufacture and importation of military firearms for the criminals to use. This is intended to foster a feeling of insecurity, which would lead the American people to voluntarily disarm themselves by passing laws against firearms. Using drugs and hypnosis on mental patients in a process called Orion, the CIA inculcated the desire in these people to open fire on schoolyards and thus inflame the anti-gun lobby. This plan is well underway and so far is working perfectly. The middle class is begging the government to do away with the second amendment. There were two rallies that took place in the city today where New Yorkers expressed outrage over the shooting that we saw in Texas earlier this week. Dozens of people showed up for this rally here in Union Square that was hosted by New York City public advocate Jamani Williams. The other protest took place in Foley Square and was hosted by the advocacy group Youth Over Guns. At both rallies, New Yorkers grieved for the 21 lives lost in the Texas massacre. The groups then called for stricter gun laws locally and federally. They want to see a national ban on assault weapons. They are also calling on the Senate to pass legislation on background checks for those attempting to buy guns. They also want more funding for community groups working to combat gun violence. We've seen over 19 children murdered in Texas, in Uvalde, Texas, and so we felt the urgency to come out. This is something that's becoming unbearable. We see the gun violence happen every day in our communities, and there's something we could do about it. And so we're calling on our legislators to do something. So the New Yorkers we spoke to tonight say they are fed up with the gun violence across this city, but also across the nation. They say they won't stop protesting until there is change. We are live tonight in Union Square. Karen Dillon. We're introducing legislation to implement a national freeze on handgun ownership. What this means is that it will no longer be possible to buy, sell, transfer, or import handguns anywhere in Canada. In other words, we're capping the market for handguns. As a further part of this new legislation, we're also fighting gun smuggling and trafficking by increasing maximum criminal penalties and providing more tools for law enforcement to investigate firearm crimes. And we'll require the permanent alteration of long gun magazines so they can never hold more than five rounds. These are actions that doctors, experts and chiefs of police have been calling for for years and we're acting on their advice. So the president is, is look, he's been calling for action for some time. Uh, what we have seen, these, in particular, these past two weeks uh, with these mass shootings in Buffalo, and we saw the president go to Buffalo and, and grieve with the family there. We saw the president just, and the first lady, uh, just this past Sunday go, uh, go to uh, Texas uh, to grieve with the parents there. Um, and it is heart-wrenching what, what uh, we're experiencing. This is an epidemic, the gun violence that we're seeing. Uh, across the across the country, and we have to do something, and we have to we have to continue uh, to make efforts uh, to act to protect our kids, to protect uh, people going to the grocery store. The president has made this one of his priorities from the first day that he walked in uh, into this in, in, into this administration, and now he's calling on Congress to act. Uh, and so he is is hopeful. Uh, he wants to make sure there's action. Um, he, our the White House, uh, we have our 
White House team that is in constant communication uh, with Congress on a, an array of issues, including this one, because again, this is a priority. And he wants to, to make, continue to make sure that he continues to voice um, his concern and what, what needs to be done next. Look, the president has done everything that he can um, from, from, from the federal government. We are looking at other executive actions that we can possibly do. Uh, this president has done more executive actions at this point than any other president, uh, but it's not up to him alone. I think your own country, the United States, has a very complicated relationship with guns because on one hand it's almost perceived as a symbol of freedom protected by the Second Amendment, but on the other hand it also created a specifically American form of violence, mass violence, mass shootings in schools and universities. So I wonder where do you stand on the issue of gun control in the United States? Well, first of all, I believe in, in the Second Amendment and the Constitution more than anything in the world. And I think that Adolf Hitler, for example, when he wanted to annihilate the people of Germany, the first thing he did was take away their guns. And the, 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 the rights to bear arms wasn't just to protect the people from foreign invaders, it was to protect them against evil governments and anyone that would violate their inherent rights as a human being. So I believe in the Second Amendment and I believe that, I hate to say this, a lot of these mass murders and all this funny stuff that's going on, I believe a lot of this is engineered.